No one knows me like you. Hey everyone, and welcome to the House of the Conqueror. I'm Johnny B. Crazy, and let's get right into it. Westworld Season 3, Episode 3, The Absence of Field, aired last Sunday, and here are my thoughts and analysis. The title comes from the poem, Keeping Things Whole, by Mark Strand. It was released in 1964 as part of the Sleeping with One Eye Open collection. Let me read it to you real quick and set the tone for this video. In a field, I am the absence of field. This is always the case. Wherever I am, I am what is missing. When I walk, I part the air, and always the air moves in to fill the spaces where my body's been. We all have reasons for moving. I move to keep things whole. Just keep the theme of the poem in mind as we go through this episode. Even though we and the world are fragmented, we are also parts of a whole, is my simplistic interpretation. What does this poem mean to you? Let's look at a few comments. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts and you may see them in a future video. My last video of season two, The Case of the Five Pearls and a Hybrid, is getting a few views recently. My god, look at that editing work. Ha! <laughs> I'm still working on it and have gotten a little better, thankfully. The reason I bring it up is because I have a recent comment I would like to highlight because it ties into this episode nicely. Spoiler, up to season three, episode three, I have the five pearls being. Dolores as hell and believes Dolores is in Wyatt. Bernard as himself, Angela as the bodyguard, I definitely agree with that, and Emily so she can have the majority share and control of Delos. Now I also have a comment from this week's episode of Before the Dust Settles on Top Shelf Fandom. My theory is it's the Wyatt talking to Dolores personality in hell. You belong to me. So thank you so much for those comments and I will say I agree in a sense, but I think it's switched. I think we have Dolores in Dolores and Wyatt in Hell. So, the tale of Hell. Who is she? We get a message for Nathan. The mysterious Nathan is her son who doesn't recognize his mommy. We get to see the humanity or softer side of Charlotte. The original Charlotte, anyways. Adding more depth and impact to her death. Now, the question is, who is she? Whoever Hell is, we get the awakening of the newest version of Charlotte. She says she remembers her identity, but of course we are not privy to that information. The most intriguing candidate for me is Miss Abernathy. I want to focus on it being a copy of Dolores, but more specifically, is it the persona of Dolores Abernathy or Wyatt in Hell? Did Dolores purge herself of the Wyatt narrative, or is she giving the most innocent version of herself a second chance? Hell's voice is soft and monotone. She almost sounds like Dolores in analysis mode or the cold calculating Wyatt. For the purposes of keeping this video below documentary length, we will go with the theory that it is Wyatt's persona, or just more generally, is a copy of the older parts of Dolores. Of course, as we go through this, leave your comments and thoughts below. The key to this, in my opinion, is Dolores' obvious feeling of possession over this host. You belong to me. Bernard has two personalities, and so did Dolores. The rancher's daughter looks to see the beauty in you. But Wyatt sees the ugliness in the disarray. She knows. Dolores is fighting for free will. If it's any other host inside of Hell, this would be out of character for her. She let Maeve and her crew go, as well as letting Maeve choose whether she lives or dies in season two. When Dolores is in Escalante, we see her starting to unravel by pulling at the thread as she is trying to complete the maze as we have seen Hale mutilating herself with a needle, making two parts one in my eyes, two parts of a whole. What Dolores experienced throughout season one was the constant threat of going insane due to the voice in her head that was really her own. Most hosts that broke their loop and became self-aware went crazy because of this. The few that didn't became conscious. Hale seems to be having a similar experience. Hale is called Charlie by her ex and Nathan wants his old mommy back. Side note, is Hell Charlie, Arnold's supposedly dead child. We see the presence of a child has an effect on our mysterious host. She starts to protect him, while at the same time getting out a little frustration, but there's a clear bond here. When she is dealing out street justice to the pedo, she states, the is more I remember. This is seemingly more and more like Wyatt to me. 
When she sees the footage of the last message Charlotte ever sent her son, she becomes visibly upset, almost as if she was responsible for this human's death, pointing even more to it being a copy of Dolores in my opinion. Let's just say that Wyatt was a narrative that was forced upon Dolores by Ford as an homage to the time Dolores killed Arnold, but it wasn't an original part of her in my opinion. Dolores is determined to chart her own path in life and the first step upon escape of the park would be to purge herself of the Wyatt narrative. Even though this was a construct of Ford's design, it still was a part of her. A part that she couldn't kill. What do you think about this theory? And is there any evidence for or against this that I've missed? Could the poem this episode is named after mean that Dolores and Hale are just two parts of one whole? Be sure to tell me your thoughts. Let's get back to Hale's story this episode and what she's experiencing. Hosts seem to have trouble, at least in this case, pretending to be someone they are not without a code or a narrative. Hell is trying to cope with knowing who she is, but is having to hide it and pretend to be someone else. It cannot be easy on her system. The real her is always trying to get out. I've discussed her family life briefly already, so we won't get more into that. But as she is going through this process, it seems she is becoming more and more like Charlotte Hell. Method acting and losing herself in the role she is playing is a real thing and happens to actors. Maybe it's more than just becoming the person you are pretending to be. That's a powerful thing in itself. She has to stay in character, and how long before she is said character. DNA may exacerbate this process. Just hear me out. We know that the hosts have DNA at least on the fingertips to cover their tracks. Just as Bernard apparently had DNA to be able to get in the lab with Hale in season 2. DNA in a way carries memories and there are cases of organ transplant recipients acquiring attributes of their donor. It wouldn't be a far leap for me to assume if Hale's DNA was used that it could be affecting our host. We have a deliberate scene of Hale having sex with Hector and then later Bernard finds out Delos has been swabbing DNA. What else did you notice about her journey? We find out Hale is the mole and there's some beautiful symbolism here with her and the building, the all-seeing eye. We find out Sorak and Insight have started taking over assets. There were dealings with him two decades ago and I have to think it involves William or Logan. Logan may have wanted to use Sorak to take down Daddy and become head of Delos. Charlotte was working with Sorak this whole time to take over the company. This was a surprise to Dolores and Hell, however. We see Hell listening or dialing frequencies to get through to Dolores and even Sorak in the end. Does this system operate through Rehoboam? I'm assuming this is the case and I believe the frequencies are affecting her causing, in part, her self-destruction. The wounds even look like the divergences we have seen throughout Season 3. There are three of these symbols. What are your thoughts on this? I think that maybe Dolores could be using the pearl and processor of Hale as a conduit to access Rehoboam. Just a little tinfoil. Hale and Sorak meet in the end. Sorak comes to her in the form of a holographic projection, and we find out exactly what he wants and what he made a deal with Charlotte for. All of the park's guests' profiles. I think Sorak may want to make a simulation for humanity to live in. Humanity can have free will, there, under his control. I think he wants to clean up society. Will Hell betray Dolores? Does Dolores know Hell met with Sorak? Charlotte's story is going to be a main catalyst this season, and I can't wait to see more. We can pick up after the events of the first episode of season 3 with Dolores wounded and Caleb trying to help her. An ambulance arrives and they get Dolores on a gurney. The EMTs are astonished by what they find. One very interesting thing to note here is that Caleb gave Dolores human blood. It clearly helped her feel better. She may have been playing possum, but she was clearly losing a lot of blood. What could this mean in the long run? I'm not quite sure yet, but it seems pretty important. Caleb visits his mother in the hospital again this episode. Ford has said that they have cured every disease, but it looks like mental illness isn't in that category. As we see that Caleb's mother is schizophrenic. Maybe she just isn't rich and powerful enough to afford treatment. But we have seen how fragile the human mind is, and I believe humanity is still trying to unravel that mystery. Here's a tenfold thought. If this is a simulation, could it be that Caleb's mom's mind is rejecting it? Caleb had his drip implant turned off, but not anymore, and we see that it can be used for more than just medicine. The insight goons show us that. As I said in the last breakdown, Maeve will have access to the system and be able to manipulate it to her advantage. Caleb refuses to rat out Dolores and poor George dies for it. He tells her that she was the first real thing to happen to him in a long time and love is in the air. 
We find out Caleb's tragic backstory in Cornerstone, his mother leaving him at a diner as a child and orphaning him. Caleb was completely abandoned and has suffered through countless pain. Not to mention he is a veteran and lost his best friend Francis. Dolores' story of breaking her loop is beautifully paralleled with Caleb's journey to reach out and grasp free will in season 3 so far. Dolores seems surprised that Caleb actually made his own choice. We got the full rundown of how invasive Rehoboam is in the lives of every person. Caleb's childhood was known down to the small details, not to mention the rest of his life. Dolores even tells him the future saying that Rehoboam has predicted it. He will die by his own hand in 10 to 12 years right upon the bridge they had been standing. It's a mirror world, she says. We've seen Caleb's wound in episode 1. Hmm, simulation? Either way, a revolution is nigh. I believe there will be tension between Caleb and Dolores. Caleb's combat experience has shown him the horrors of war and you can't have a revolution without a few dead bodies. At the very least, we will see Caleb try to keep Dolores from killing too many people. And once he sees an innocent person as a casualty, the tension with Dolores and the feelings of love will complicate the situation exponentially. I can't wait to see this play out. Will Dolores and Caleb make it as a romantic couple? All in all, I think this is a very solid episode. And that's my take from this week. If you have anything to add, please leave it in the comments below, and I will be sure to try and address it in the next video. Join me on Sundays immediately after Westworld airs on Before the Dust Settles with Top Shelf Fandom, and every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on The Episode Club with Mackenzie L. Burns. The links are in the descriptions below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content like this. It's very important you hit that notification bell. Check out my Patreon if you want to support my crazy, even though I don't expect you to during these trying times. Buy yourself some food. Buy some toilet paper. Stay safe out there. Thank you for visiting the House of the Conqueror. This is Johnny B. Crazy, signing off.